wondering what a digital ecosystem is. Some of you have probably read the word, you've read about you know, the Blackberry ecosystem or maybe the Apple ecosystem because we all participate in digital ecosystems. Who here has an Apple phone? Who here has an iOS? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's an ecosystem. Okay? You have the phone and then you have all of those apps. Right? All those things you download and you play and you take the photos and you share it with your friends and you all those sort of things. Those apps and yourself are what's called an ecosystem. Okay? And that's a dual centered thing. The more apps there are on Apple, the more likely you're going to go and get an Apple phone. Right? Because that's really cool. The more apps there are, the more fun there is on the phone. But the more of you who are using the Apple phone, the more people who make apps for it. So there's this spin wheel effect. There's this virtuous cycle. Okay. But the ecosystem is just not the demand side, you know, the people who use it. It's also the people who create the phone as well. So the people who make the technology, you've probably heard of Foxconn, how Apple actually has been unfortunately caught out using child labor, you know, make, make, making chips for their phones and things. So that's also part of the ecosystem. So it's the supply side and the demand side, that network of people who come together to make the product valuable and successful. Android. Who here has an Android phone? Yeah. Android is also an ecosystem, but it's a bit different to the Apple ecosystem. Because although it has the apps on the one side and new people using it on the other, it's not one person making the phone. There's lots of different companies making it. There's LG, there's Samsung, there's Asus, all these different phones making the, the Android system. So here you can see it's an ecosystem, very similar to Apple, but it's different because the supply side is broken up. It's not a single supplier. This is what we mean by a digital ecosystem. Okay, does this fall together? But it's just not technology like phones. Amazon is an ecosystem. Who here shops on Amazon? Almost everyone, yeah. They know too much about us, don't they? <laughs> um, so Amazon's an ecosystem. You've got all these suppliers supplying all of the, the um, you know, all of the goods in. You shop on Amazon. But have you also bought something on Amazon that was not sold by Amazon? It said shipped by someone else. Yeah? Why are those people there? Because you're shopping on Amazon. Right? So it's the same idea. You've got these complementary assets, you've got these suppliers coming in to join up with your value, right? And you get this spin wheel effect. The more people shopping on Amazon, the more people who want to sell on Amazon. And the same with eBay. Well, but eBay is different to Amazon. Why is it different? Because eBay doesn't do shopping. eBay doesn't do shipping. eBay doesn't stock their own goods. What does eBay do? They're a brokerage platform. They link buyers and sellers. The more people selling on eBay, the more people who go to eBay. And the more people who go to eBay, the more. So that's what we think of an ecosystem, this spin wheel effect, okay? Where you get these two markets, supply and demand, and they sort of like grow each other and they feed each other, feed, feed each other, other, other on. Now, actually, these things have been a while, around for quite a while. You know that Amazon started in 1994? And eBay was 1995, and eBay has always been profitable, the only, only internet company ever to be profitable the whole time. Right. We know all about these things. We know how these ecosystems compete. You read in the press, Amazon is fighting, you know, um, not, well not really Amazon, let's say Apple is fighting Android, and we know about how, how these ecosystems compete. We also know about this idea of the network effect, you know, the more people there, means the more people here want to come, and so on. We know a lot about this. There's been a lot of research. It's, it's actually quite, you know, and there's a lot of research going on how pricing affects this. So, yeah, this is quite well known. And then there's also, we know about the platforms, the technical bits in the middle, you know, how the systems and the standards and how people link up to actually do this. We know a lot about this. Right? We know how this all works. But what we don't know is how you actually make one. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to start a big business, and if you want to start an internet business, who here wants to start their own business? Yeah, I mean, there's more hands than I thought, right? So who is it? Probably a lot of you are thinking of doing it on the internet, yeah? Because, I mean, that's, what, you know, an, on, an online business is one of the easiest places, and it's quite cost-effective to start. Not all of you, some of you might be doing it otherwise. But if you want to start an online business, you will be thinking, how do I link up the two sides of the market? How do I get the suppliers on board? 
Yeah? But actually, we don't know how it happens. All the stories of Amazon and eBay and these, you know, Facebook, all these fantastic stories, it's just happened. It's just sort of like emerged. No one's ever really, really delved into it and thought, what's the secret? How do we do this? Yeah? And this is important, because if you're an entrepreneur, you want to know how to do this. Yeah? And for that matter, if you're a big company, you know, if you're like Microsoft, and you want to launch a new mobile phone, you want to know how to do this, don't you? How, this is quite important for Microsoft, how do they start competing with Apple and Android? This is important stuff to know. So, so my colleagues and I were sitting down one day and we said, okay, let's, let's try and work out how do you create these things? Do you actually create them? Or do, you, do they actually emerge by themselves? Do they just happen by themselves? You know? or, or can someone do these elections and do it? Oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look into this. So we had this idea, we thought, I know what we'll do. Why don't we ask the question, do they emerge the same way? Did Apple and Android appear in the same way? The big ecosystems, all those thousands, millions of apps and users, did they emerge in the same way? Did they get created in the same way? Did eBay and Amazon happen in the same, same way? Or are they different? Are Apple and Amazon different? Who knows? It'd be interesting to know, because if they are the same, or if they are similar, then that'll give us some really good stuff, really good information to go and create our own and win. So we said, okay, let's go and look at six ecosystems. Amazon, eBay, Google, Facebook, Wikipedia, and Salesforce.com. Familiar with all these? Yeah? Maybe not Salesforce.com? Okay, now we choose these six because they're all very similar. In fact, they're all online digital services. Everything that they offer is online. Okay, you have to deal with these guys online. Amazon, they're, Amazon's an online retailer, the original online retailer. You go to them, you buy stuff, a van arrives, stuff comes out. Amazon. eBay, eBay's a brokerage. They link people up and they take a little commission on top. They say, person A, me, person B, I'll take 10%, please. That's how they make money. Facebook. Facebook makes money by having all of you linked together and selling you ads. Getting all of your information, all of that fantastic stuff you told them, where you live, where you go, where you went to school, who your friends are, what you like, and they sell that information and they do that with ads. And then they sell those ads. That's how they make money. That's how they make money. Google also makes money with ads, but not with personal information. They make money through search. They make money through when you're looking for something, you type it in, they get all that information and they link up the advertisers with your search terms. So it's a different sort of advertising driven driven model. Salesforce. Salesforce is customer relationship management. Have you ever run up a, have you ever sat there and you've hopped on the phone and you've rang some company and someone said, yes, you hear them typing on the keyboard, yes, I can do this, sir, yes, yes, yes. That's called a customer relationship management system. Yeah. Customer relationship management. It's quite ex ex explanatory of the term. They do it online. You now the first company do it online. If you've ever heard of software as a service, they're the original software as a service. Come, come, the first one. They do it. Their whole business model subscription. If you want to, if you want to use it, you pay. Hundred pounds per user per day. Right? That's how it works. And then you got Wikipedia. Who uses Wikipedia? It's free. Yeah. So we got six completely different ecosystems that work in completely different ways. We thought, let's compare these. Let's put these together. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. So we went and got all the information we could. All we could. So we went and got press releases, we went and got books, we went and got newspaper articles, we went to their websites, we went and got histories, we got all this stuff. We gave them as much information about the early history of these companies, from their first idea to when they were the undoubted market leaders. And then we sat down and we just went, okay, on this date, on the 1st of January 1997, this happened. And on this date, this happened. On this date, this happened. So we took all this information and we coded that. So we said, on particular days, it was per day, on this date, this event happened. On this date, they hired someone new. On this date, they had an IPO. On this date, they released a new technology function or feature or section. Amazon decided to sell DVDs on that date. Okay. So we ended up with databases for all of these six of about 1,200, 1,300 dates for each one where something happened from when they started and they end. And that was pretty cool. But then we realized, well, this list of stuff, right, is not very useful. It just tells us the story. Right? And the story, I mean, that's just like reading a book. We need to know something more. 
So we thought about it, and we thought, well, actually, there's a couple of things that are common. Well, one the thing that's common is that all of these companies gathered resources. They, maybe they got money from investors, maybe they got new premises, maybe they hired people. I mean, did you know that Amazon hired an ex-Secretary of State of the US to be their political advisor for a while? Well, that, that's quite an important event, right? That really helps them out, right? So they gathered resources. So you could say, on this date, this event, that's actually a resource event. That's when they did something that related to the resources and the assets that drove the business forward. So you could code code up an R for resources. And we said, well, obviously this is a digital service, right? So technology events, release of a new, you know, a new feature, getting new servers, you know, putting in load balancing. Uh, that was very important for, for eBay. Do you know that the eBay site crashed every day for over nine months? And people couldn't use it for, for, like, for only about two or three hours a day for a while. And yet they still survived. They had big technological problems. So some things happened. Some of these events were technological. Okay? And some of them were actually about the rules. I mean, if you're going to have apps over here and you know, people over here, and you're going to have all these people interacting, you need to put rules and behaviors. You've got to make who's allowed to be on them, who's allowed to be in the ecosystem. What are they allowed to do in the ecosystem? How does it cost? Okay, so you need to have all these rules and standards that need to go. You have all these sort of events. We call these institutions. The idea of an institution is, is a set of rules that govern, hu that govern human behavior. So we call these institutions. Regulations and rules of behavior. And then there's also the context. You know, so competitors coming along. I mean, you know, if, believe it or not, right, when Facebook started, it had some big competitors. MySpace was the, was, was the leader. Friendster was dying. You know. The actions they took changed the things that Facebook did in their early days. Okay. Similarly, Amazon and Amazon had lots of, lots, of, lots of online competitors, but they won. So the action competitors. And regulators. When Google released Gmail, do you know that in Massachusetts, they actually passed a law saying it was illegal to put advertising in your inbox? So, that, so Google actually had to face up the lawyers in the US as well. So the context in which we're trying to do this, the, the governments, you know, the competitors, all this stuff, this all, this all, all, all influences as well. So we have these four different types of events. You've got all these dates, you've got like resource, you've got technology, you've got all these things happen. Okay. So what does our data look like now? Looks like this. Dang. What can you do with this? Who does biology? Yeah, you do genetics? Understand, you know, the way it all fits together? Does this sort of look like a genetic sequence again? Yeah. yeah. So we had all, we had six of these, really long, thousands and thousands long. So you know what we can do? We can actually take these six and we can use genetic techniques. The techniques they use to compare proteins. And the techniques they compare genetic sequences in RNA and DNA and see if they're the same. We'll see if they're different. So we went and grabbed all this software from, from you know, biologists and stuff, geneticists. We said, let's run this stuff through. Let's see what the results come out. Right? And so let's see if, they're, if this software tells us they're similar or they're different. So we did this. And what do you think we got? They're all completely and utterly different to each other. <laughs> that was a really shock. We thought, my goodness, this is not good news. Right? These six of them, they're all completely different. There's got to be something else. Right? So we looked at this, and then we looked at it, and we looked at the histories, and then we looked at the market growth, and we looked at all these different approaches for looking at, you know, for, 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 for comparing these things. And we realized, actually, if you look at it as a whole, from the first idea to once they're successful, they're completely different. Each ecosystem, each platform emerges in a completely unique way. But you can split it into three. Actually, there's a first bit, initiation, where everything starts to happen. Then market takeoff occurs, and then there's momentum. Everything really starts to grow, and then you get control. All of a sudden, they're now market leader, and they're now in control. So this is three phases. So although they're completely different, they have three common stages. Does that make sense? Yeah? So initiation, step one. This is the stuff you'd expect. This is what all entrepreneurs do. It's really exciting stuff. I've started a couple of businesses myself. You get your idea, you know, 
you hire some people, you make the software, you make your product, you make your service, you get some money in, you start building it, you lease it, you get your first customers, your suppliers, all of this sort of stuff. This is what initiation is. And guess what? When we ran it through the genetic testing software, they were the same. Statistically similar. So although as a whole these six C sequences are different, this first initiation phase, they're all similar. They, all of these ecosystems did the same thing. Cool, right? So we thought, well, what about the second phase? Momentum, right? So this is a stage where the market takes off. People start pouring in, people start using it, both sides start arriving, you know, both, so in Google's time, all the advertisers started arising, more people started searching, more people started searching, more advertisers arrived. It was all sort of like growing and growing like this. And in this phase, the competition fights back because they realized, hey, Competition arrives and it starts growing. But what became very important here is you're going to build trust and loyalty. The more customers arrive, they're going to have confidence that what you're doing makes sense. Why else? Why are half of you using an iPhone? Because it works, right? You know, it's trustworthy. You know it's good. It's not going to fail you. That's probably why half of you haven't gone for the Windows phone, right? So, because you're not really confident it's going to be very good. Yeah? So, so that's where market momentum and the flywheel starts to tick. Both sides starts to spin off. But if you compare these using the Unix soft software so sequencing, they're different. That's interesting. And then you control stage three. And this is when they're now market leader and they say, okay, let's start taking the value. Let's start making money. Okay. And in this point, control mechanisms come in. The real pricing mechanism change, changes. The way the, the, the platform owners, the way the people at the centre of the ecosystem try and control it really stuff. I mean, in Wikipedia's time, they had a big problem. All of the, a couple of their articles were proven to be absolutely false, and it happened to be in the newspaper, which was terrible news for them. Really, really, really bad. Right? How could you trust Wikipedia if there was just lies? That was all in the New York Times, printed in the New York Times. So they introduced editorial controls, and that's why it's hard, it's not as easy to edit a page now on Wikipedia as it was before. This was part of control right, coming into play. And then, if you run the genetic sequencing software, they're different, but they're even more different. So what happens, what this means is, is that when an ecosystem starts, everyone's doing the same sort of thing. You know, they're all trying to get the business started and launching it. But once it launches and the business starts to work and everything starts to proceed, differences appear. And those differences are unique to your ecosystem, unique to how everyone is interacting, unique to the ideas, the trust, the loyalty that's built in that ecosystem. And then when you try and pull the money out, it becomes even more different. Because the way you pull the money out will be specific to what's happened beforehand. Okay. So, they start similar and they change more and more over time. That's interesting. So, what does this mean for us? Right? If you want to be an entrepreneur and start a business, what does it mean? Well, it means if you're going to try and start a business and create you know, both sides around it, now, now remember, when Pierre Omidyar started eBay, he started it because he was annoyed that he hadn't made money on an IPO and he wanted to create the perfect market. He didn't leave his day, day job for a year and a half. He didn't think he was going to make any money. It just happened by accident. This could just be a hobby that just works for you. So what this means is, if you are trying to create an ecosystem, you are trying to grow your innovation, start your own business, copying what other people did probably is not a good idea. Right? Copy the early times, do what the entrepreneurs do, but once you start working, once the business starts working, you're pretty much going to have to think it hard through yourself, because it's your own idea. Yeah? It's going to be unique to itself. Also, building customer trust is vital. Often the focus is on technology. Yeah? Technology, getting the product better. But no, it's better to make the customer happy than, than go forward. And last, don't be greedy. Only when you're market leader do you really try and pull the value out. That's when you want to actually make the money. Don't try and pull the money out too soon. So who knows what this picture is? Come on. Okay, so this is a game called Clash of Clans, yeah? <laughs> This is a very interesting games company. Yeah? A lot of you play this. Really cool idea. Yeah. It's basically go and beat up your friends, right? Your next door ne neighbours. So, this company that made this, this is on an ecosystem. They're actually creating their own ecosystem as, as, as well. They sold 50% of their business. They're called Supercell, by the way. They're from Figaro. 
They sold 50% of their business a month ago. And they created an ecosystem and they work within an ecosystem. You know how much they sold 50% of their business for? One billion US dollars. You know when they founded the business? 2010. Wow. So if you get your ecosystem strategy right, it can be really, really, really successful for you. Thank you very much.